And coming up, we'll be live here in Surrey talking about the weather. Temperatures across the UK are heading up towards 30 degrees. In Spain, they've already hit 40. Plus, a double whammy of heat and hay fever. Some expert advice for those feeling a little under the weather. Hello and a very warm welcome to you, quite literally today. Now let me ask you, should roads around hospitals in central London be closed to help improve air quality for sick patients? That's what the Chief Executive of Great Ormond Street Hospital thinks and made the plea on what is Clean Air Day. He was joined by the Mayor, who criticised ministers for decades of dither and delay when it comes to tackling toxic air. However, the government says it's the responsibility of the Mayor to bring London's pollution levels down. Let's talk about the weather now because it is getting hotter and hotter in much of England and Wales. And temperatures are expected to reach something like 34 Celsius in some parts tomorrow. Heat health alerts have been issued for London, the southeast and the east of England. Our correspondent Duncan Kennedy is in Surrey for us tonight. Duncan. Well, Sophie, we've been seeing temperatures here in Surrey today, around about mid-late 20s, 26, 27 degrees. Tomorrow, as you were just saying there, it's expected to hit 30, if not more, across large parts of southern and middle parts of England. Now, France is already seeing 38 degrees, and Spain has touched on 40 degrees, and it's from those areas that we're going to be getting our heat tomorrow. Now, of course, that's going to be uncomfortable, even dangerous for some people, but there are plenty of others who say this is a welcome return to some early summer sunshine. Whether it's heat or water, summer's waves are rolling in across much of the United Kingdom. In the south, temperatures have been heading past the mid-20s, possibly on their way to 30 by tomorrow. Oh yeah, it can be too hot. We've had to come out of London today to try and get some, uh, some air. It's going to be 31 out here yeah. tomorrow. I mean, I'd go in the shed or have a little glass of something to cool down. Might have a dip in the pond soon, but no, it's never hot enough. In Spain, fires have been brought on by temperatures of 40 degrees. The arid soil and vegetation prone to the sun's destructive rays. In Madrid, it's a constant effort to keep cool and hydrated. Every summer, it's getting worse and it's affecting us on every level. I find it harder to cope with the heat. It is very hard, but we have to keep going. There is no other way. Across the border, France is also under this punishing heat blanket. 38 degrees makes it enjoyable for many, but others believe it has wider meaning. We're experiencing global warming, so this is inevitable. I think every year it's going to get hotter and hotter. I don't know if there's anything that can be done. In the UK, some regions could see 30 degrees or more tomorrow. Health professionals and others say we must treat it seriously, alongside the fun and relaxation. Duncan Kennedy, BBC News. So the temperatures rising are predicted to be into the 30s tomorrow and there's a heat health alert for London. Uh, while some welcome the warmth, for others it's a discomfort. And what about if you're a hay fever sufferer? Well, that can also be a challenge. So let's join Thomas in Grosvenor Square for us this evening. Thomas. Well, Riz, it's days like this when we realise that we're really spoilt in London for all the fabulous green spaces and parks that we have. I'm down here at Grosvenor Park or Grosvenor Square in central London and there are plenty of people still around, some trying to grab a few hours of that last evening sun, but the vast majority of people are under the canopy of these huge ancient trees. And I'll have more about what's happening here in a moment. But with trees, well, there comes pollen, and for pot, with pollen, it means that for some, there comes hay fever. It's a bit of a nightmare. I have to hold my hand up to that. I spent most of today in a dark room, and many people have said this year their hay fever has been perhaps worse than ever before. So we sent out Wendy Hurl to investigate. A hay fever sufferer's worst nightmare. Pollen whooshing into the air as grass is cut in summer. 
because while the sun is shining, insects buzzing around flowers, grasses swaying in a gentle breeze. If you're like me and 16 million others across the country, you'll have a runny nose, a scratchy throat, itchy eyes and constant sneezing. This hay fever season seems worse than others. So what is hay fever? When a pollen grain first enters your body, it is almost immediately met with a bouncer of your this body. This is the science bit from the Royal Institution. Basically, it's your body's immune response to something it thinks is harmful. We're talking hay fever. How is it for you? It's been awful this year. Like, really, 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 bad. really bad. Like, you can probably hear it on my voice. It's like bunged up, itchy, painful eyes, the lot. I think the, the tablets, like, you know, managing it helps a lot. Um, but in the mornings, it's, it's grim. Everyone says it feels like hay fever is worse this year. Is that true? And what's causing it? In order for plants to produce pollen, they need a, like a lot of dry, warm, sunny days. And then we've had very, very mild winters. So what that does is it means that the, the pollen seasons this year have started earlier, so we get an increase of pollen. If, you, if hay fever is not untreated, um, it can actually lead to the development of asthma in some people. So it's really important to treat hay fever symptoms. So we hay fever sufferers must have remedies and tricks. Stay inside mid-morning when the pollen count is highest and run a mile from the lovely lawn maintenance teams keeping our parks tidy. Well, that certainly answers a lot of my questions. And if you want more information, you can go to allergyuk.org for advice on how to manage your symptoms. Now, either I'm a glutton for punishment or just too, don't enjoy being out in the sun, but I've come under one of the canopies of these trees to talk a little bit more about what's happening down here at Grosvenor Square. This evening, lots of ancient trees, lots of kind of quite parched grassland and then one single hedge around the perimeter but earlier this week uh, the owners of this grove and got permission to change it and we're with the project lead Lucy Puddle now who's going to tell us first of all about a project to rewild this place briefly when was it actually wild so originally it was laid out in the 1720s and during its time it's evolved in lots of different guises and was once a wilderness woke and our proposals seek to bring that back in part. So what does that mean to the Londoner who's used to it as a, a place to sunbathe? So that means that within the centre of the gardens, where you were standing earlier, there will be a central oval lawn where people can enjoy sunny days like today. And around the perimeter, there will be what's called the shaded garden, offering respite on warm days like this and an opportunity for people to wander around the gardens and enjoy nature. And what's the benefit for Londoners other than it looking good? For me, it probably somewhere I'll stay away from. But what's the benefit in terms of biodiversity? So I think the lockdowns that we all endured recently only went to show the importance of green space and how much we value nature. Uh, the benefits will be vast, so they offer an opportunity for people to come down here and enjoy the gardens, the peace and tranquility, to reconnect with nature and to um, just spend time with friends and, and do leisure activities. We deliberately want the gardens to sort of remain that remain uh, with that tranquil feeling that you've got now, but there'll be a much more enhanced planting regime and new trees so that people can enjoy nature. And perhaps worth saying as well that the trees that you see, these beautiful ancient trees, they're not going anywhere. So a handful of the uh, lower grade trees will be removed in favour of new planting, but we're also planting 24 new trees. The very ancient trees that you see will remain. Fantastic. Lucy, thank you very much. Well, they only got permission for this earlier this week. There's a lot of work to do before you see any change down here at Grosvenor Square. Back to you, Riz. Thanks very much, Thomas. Uh, glass open for punishment there. I'm a fellow hay fever sufferer, so thank you so much for that. It's not just politicians feeling the heat, of course. Millions of Britons have been sweltering in heatwave conditions. Today was officially the hottest day of the year so far, almost reaching 30 degrees Celsius. 86 Fahrenheit at Heathrow. It's predicted to be even hotter in the south of England tomorrow, and that's prompted warnings for people to make sure they stay properly hydrated and to be careful if they try to cool down in rivers, lakes or the sea. Well, Lewis Warner is in the town of Droitwich Spa for us this evening. Lewis, a good place to cool off? 
It certainly is, Lucrezia. Yes, this Lido has had its busiest day of the year so far. Tomorrow, it expects to be even busier as temperatures climb even further. It's not all fun and games, though. We know that this heat that we're experiencing uh, does pose a serious risk to the vulnerable in society, in particular the elderly. So the advice is, of course, go out, enjoy the sun where you can and while we've got it. But when you do so, do so safely. The sun is out and we've got our hats on. Across the country, the heat is providing the perfect excuse for tasty temperature control. Yeah, it's really nice. The kids really enjoy it, especially. Yeah, it's uh, lots of fun. Oh, what do you like in the sun? That it's hot. That it's hot. What do you like about the sun, though? Hot. That it's hot as well. When the sun's out and it's like it is today, it's absolutely fantastic. In the scorching weather, this water looks extremely inviting, but it's not to be messed with. Last year, 16-year-old Samuel Haycock drowned at Ully Reservoir near Rotherham. Innocent fun, uh, and that's what they're seeking, that little bit of uh, uh, excitement and things like that on, a, on an hot day, and they've come out with their friends, and, uh, you know, it does look beautiful and it looks inviting, uh, but it's important that we get that message across that these waterways are, they've got a lot of hidden dangers in them, uh, undercurrents, etc., and, and then particularly the cold water, and cold water shock and what it can do to you. The care sector has its work cut out. At this home in Hailsham, their elderly residents are again the most vulnerable, this time to the heat. They don't take this as a problem for them, but we need to make sure this weather is not harming them. Just try to keep it cool indoors, also offering plenty of fluids, you know, just make sure they, they are hydrated. In Worcester, pharmacy staff say they're helping more and more customers with heat-related problems. So we see a lot of bites and stings this time of year. People come to us for allergy and hay fever relief, whether it be a tablet or a nasal spray. Um, we would definitely recommend to keep out of the sun at the strongest times of the day. Keep yourself well hydrated throughout the day as well. There's money to be made in the heat too. This convoy of ice cream vans were today spotted in Sussex, heading towards the coast with a taste of summer on board. Whether you're jumping for joy over summer's final arrival or wishing it away, everyone's hot weather experience will be different and hopefully safe. Lewis Warner, ITV News, Worcestershire. From Worcestershire to Ascot and uh, where Alex is there for us uh, tonight. And it's also unseasonably hot. Alex, you know, this is happening more and more frequently. Is it climate change? Well, Lucrezia, in answer to your question, well, these are the types of events that climate scientists have been warning about for years. So, yes, they are happening more frequently. We've seen 34 degrees Celsius three times in the last six years. Before then, you have to look back to the 1970s. So this isn't welcome news at all. And if we take a look now at how the temperatures have been building through the course of this week, they have been jumping up pretty quickly. And that's for two reasons. We've seen high pressure across the UK, which has led to day on day heating. And then the high pressure has shifted out towards the east. And that's why we're now tapping in to that heat wave, which has been across Europe, where they've seen temperatures of 40 degrees plus. So as we head into tomorrow, that's why we could see a possible high of around 34, maybe 35 degrees Celsius. As we know, that won't be welcome news for many. And we do have those heat health warnings very much in place. Other than that, though, I've spent the day at Ascot, where it has been Ladies' Day. And of course, fashion has been on the agenda. And I can tell you that they have been struggling here with the heat.